In this section, we start introducing the basic ideas of using sample data to construct estimates about the population. Um, this is one type of, one process that falls under the umbrella of statistical inference. So in short, statistical inference is the process of making really good guesses. So in the end result, we're never going to know if our estimates end up being correct, incorrect. We're just going to be coming to the strongest conclusions we can based off the data we have available. So making really good guesses, or more accurately, statistical inference is the process of drawing conclusions about a population based off sample data. So if you ever hear a report talking about um, a data-driven analysis or data-driven solutions, evidence-based decision-making, this is this idea, taking some sample data, using that to, <clears throat> excuse me, make some inferences about our population, something that we can't know for certain. So depending on whether our data comes from a sample or a population, And if we were getting data from a population, we would do that using a census. So depending on whether our data comes from a sample or a population, we're going to use different notation to indicate the different measurements that we're going to come up with. So for instance, if we are trying to calculate a proportion, so what percent of the population approves of the current president, our statistic, which would come from a sample, would be indicated as P with that little carrot on top, and we call that p hat. The parameter, which comes from the population, so the parameter or population equivalent of that would just be a lowercase p. So what we're going to do is look at sample data, calculate p hat, and use that to make an estimate about p. And we'll have different notations for the other measurements that we've looked at this semester. So for the mean, Whenever we talk about a sample mean that comes from sample data, we're talking about x bar. So just x with a bar on top. And then the population equivalent, or the symbol we use for the parameter, is the symbol mu. It's a, the Greek letter mu with this. So it kind of looks like a u with a long tail off one side. So this is the letter mu. For standard deviation, our notation is lowercase s. For population standard deviation, we're going to use the symbol sigma, which looks like an O with a tail sticking straight off the top of it. So that's the symbol sigma. For variance, that's just our standard deviation squared, so we get s squared and sigma squared. And for the median, our sample median will be represented as m bar, similar to how we had x bar. And then as a parameter, that will be represented as a lowercase m. So for right now, we're mostly going to be focused on proportions, but we'll soon get into means and medians and other measures as well. So we just kind of want to introduce that notation since we'll start seeing that. So each statistic serves as an estimator for the parameter. So again, we have the value that we know from our sample data. We have the actual value if we're able to collect all the population data. So we're going to use this sample statistic to make an estimate about that population parameter. So the problem with statistical inference is that our results always have the potential for error. And one of the roles of statisticians then is to minimize that possible error to help ensure that whatever results we come to, whatever conclusions we end up drawing, are based off the best possible information. So in our first example, if we always collected population data, we would have very little or no error in our final results. So why don't we always collect population data? So essentially, if we collected data on every single American, we could ask them questions about their ethnicity, about their income, um, about their employment status, 
we wouldn't have to draw any conclusions, we wouldn't have to make any guesses, we would have all of that complete information. But we run into problems like that, especially if we think about something like trying to survey the entire population of the United States. That's very time consuming. So collecting population data typically takes too much time. There would also be the cost of hiring people to go out and survey everyone. So collecting population data is typically too expensive. If we're talking about product testing, so for instance, trying to determine uh, if a particular product like a car meets certain safety standards, well, we have a limited supply of cars, meaning we can't crash or destroy or test every single car that comes off the production line. If we did that, then there wouldn't be any product to sell. So what the car makers do is test a sample of cars um, that run through their production process, put those through different safety testings, and then use those to kind of make conclusions or draw inferences about the rest of their production line. And there's some data that simply can't be collected. And this has to do with things like historical data. Um, for instance, weather. It was around the kind of mid to late 1700s before anybody really started collecting data on weather patterns. And it wasn't until the early 1900s when that process became more standardized and people were collecting the same types of data in the same way. So this leads to arguments about whether or not um, global warming or climate change is a real phenomenon because the folks who have data that say this is actually happening get countered by people who say you don't have enough historical data. You don't know what happened prior to these dates of collecting data. So there's no way to go back and know what the weather was like in the 1500s, 1600s, because we don't have any recorded data for that. So that information is just gone. So those are some of the reasons why we would rely on sample data rather than collecting population data. But it's important to keep in mind, if we have or if we are able to get population data, then statistical inference is not needed. So if we have all of the information that we need to consider, we don't have to make estimates, we don't have to draw inferences. If we have all the information that we need, we can just rely on that and come up with specific values. So for instance, if I was curious about all of the students in my classes this semester, how their overall grade turns out at the end of the class, I have all of that data. I wouldn't have to collect sample data, draw inferences. I'll have a final grade for each and every person in my class. But what I wouldn't have is grades for people in other people's statistics classes. So I might use my students as a model or as a sample to estimate or draw some conclusions about how students did across our entire curriculum.